Mary Ellen and I met in 1980 on the set of Milos Forman's film, Ragtime, and we hit it off. We talked about working together right from the beginning and that we would like to make a film together. There were several projects that came and went, and in 1983, Mary Ellen got an assignment with Life magazine to go to Seattle. And she called me from Seattle and she said, Mon, I have a film. And she told me the story of Rat, who was living in an abandoned hotel, and that he was roller skating up and down the corridors. And I think that was in February. And then we went back on Labor Day to start shooting with some money that made all of the difference to the way the film was made. And the money came from Willie Nelson and he, he gave us 50 grand. Amazing. No strings attached. Where do you get that in the real world? She has grown up quite a bit since she's been on these streets. She's 14 going on 21. It was totally liberating because I didn't have to talk to anybody other than Mary Ellen about making a film. And I didn't know what the film was other than I knew I did not want to do interviews on camera and that it should be filmic. You enter the world through the photography and the audio. I love to fly. It's just you're alone. You Peace and quiet, nothing around you but clear blue sky. No one to hassle you, no one to tell you where to go or what to do. The only bad part about flying is having to come back down to the fucking world. The casting session, if you like, for the film was done when they were doing the Life magazine piece. Mary Ellen had an amazing gift of being able to approach people and make a connection with them. And the ones that she made the strongest connections with were the ones that ended up in the film. I want to be really rich and live on a farm with a bunch of horses, which is my main best animal, and have three yachts or more, and diamonds and jewels and all that stuff. There were characters. To be on the street, you're playing a part. And this is theater already. I mean, to, to get a car to stop and get into the car. They'd all got street names. They dressed for the part they thought they were playing on the street. Express and change, ma'am, so me and my father could get something to eat. No, I don't, so. All right. Why not? Say so you're my father, man. Yeah. All right, then get lost. I gotta make some money. I think that they felt they were in control of their own lives. I do believe that. They were more in control of their lives on the street, in a certain sense, than they were at home. They were selling themselves, but they were victims of society. Their lives had broken down and they were out there because they just didn't want to be home. Look, I'll tell you the truth, okay? This is the honest truth. With me, you'll be safer, happier, and richer. Mary Ellen's primary role was finding the moments that we might be able to capture. That was the gift that the film has. She took very few pictures when we were filming. You know, it's impossible to have a photographer working when you're making a film. Because then, where are we looking? What is it about? So Mary Ellen was bringing everything that she learned to me. She loved the kids, and they loved her. There was a relationship between the two of them. She loved working with people who were living on the edge. She was drawn to that. Why she was drawn to that, I don't know. But she was. I'm glad she was, because she took me there. <laughs>
and she called them the unfamous. The unfamous, generally speaking, are more accessible, more open than the people that have stuff to protect. Mary Ellen, as a rule, never left the people that she photographed. But for some reason, Tiny became a real fixation. And we kept in touch. And she continued that friendship and photographed Tiny over the years. We'd go back, Mary Ellen was photographing Tiny's life, and I would shoot stuff with the kids as they were growing up. They're still young enough to where I can try to make my life better, or their lives better. Eventually start school again, and I'll get them back and spend a lot of time with them, to where they wouldn't think that I don't love them. I think the idea of making the tiny film came out of Mary Ellen when she became ill. She wanted to go back and complete, in some way, the work she'd been doing with Tiny. And I think, for me, that was also an important thing, that I would be able to make this film, which would tie all of the years that we'd spent together, together in one film. And it would end up as this film, Tiny, The Life of Aaron Blackwell. So how old were you here? I was fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. And here? 14. Is that when you first came out on the street? No, I came out when I was 13. So you'd already been out a year. So you were tough already. And so you see her on the street at 14 years old. You see her through her life. She doesn't feel like she's loved or wanted, and I do love my daughter. I mean, I did not raise them, so it's not like I could just be there for her on everything. Tiny put together a life she has 10 children. I want my kids to have a future, to have a life. I don't want them to be struggling. They're just my kids. She'd come off the street life, and she'd moderated the drugs and uh, put her life together. Do you remember when I took that picture? How old were you? I was 16. Now that I look back, I really wasn't ready. Think what it takes to survive. The fact that she was alive is incredible. I got raped the second week I was downtown. I wish I was still at home going to school. I wish my mom would stop her drinking. Because the mess I'm in now is horrible. I think Tiny respected Marion and really loved her. You were crazy about him. Admit it. I was. I liked him. More than that. No, it wasn't, because I didn't know what love was. How could I know what love was? I was 14. A kid that don't know nothing. Was it good in bed? I refuse to answer that, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Nosy ass. She went to the Annenberg School in Philadelphia, took a photography course. They gave her a camera, and she went out on the street and she discovered that this camera was like a passport. It allowed you into people's lives. And having the camera and that personality, she could go anywhere. And she talked about that, about how it was the very first day out when she went on the street. She knew this was what she wanted to do. I was a very lucky boy to have met her at that time in my life and in her life. It was a great relationship. I could bring things to her and she could bring things to me. It was not competitive. Well, I got to say it's not competitive. Marilyn was competitive, but in a funny way. <laughs> and it was a great working relationship because if we're working together on the street, and she walks in front of the camera, to me that's funny, because it means that I, at least I was shooting something that was worth having, and she's gonna take it. Do you know this camera's not on? Oh, it is. Huh? Oh, it is. How do you know it's not on? Because there's no light there. 